Hello everyone, another classic Movie Monday coming to you, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about Fantasia. Now Fantasia, in case any of you don't know, is a famous uh, Walt Disney classic, and basically it is rather different from particularly to all of the other Disney films who use who usually involve a plot and characters, but in Fantasia this is um, more designed to be an artistry kind of piece. Uh, it, it's not really designed to be this sort of three-act structure or um, have uh, a, a sort of coherent story. It, it's it's what it's really trying to do is is it's trying to throw images at you, um, while having um, the images coincide with classical music, and I think it's really safe to say that this um, film is probably one of Disney's best films. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has given it very fairly high praise. Um, it's it's really considered to be up there concerning uh, Disney in general. But what I really find appealing about Fantasia is, is that it's doing something that we haven't really seen. And again, this was made in like 1940, so uh, there is a lot of um, new things that maybe that we maybe take for granted now. Um, that happened uh, within this film and I haven't really seen other animated films or any other films in general really try to do this um, in, instead of providing a, um, a, a, th a three X structure um, instead Fantasia provides us with sort of art and movement um, the whole concept of Fantasia is basically art in movement. It's designed to be a sort of an artistic um, way of expressing certain things. Um, maybe whether those things are maybe mythical um, or whether those things are more on the lines of scientific uh, or um, with or dealing with fantasy, it, it seems like Fantasia has a lot of variety uh, within itself. Now, in order to give you an example of basically what Fantasia has to offer, I ha kind of have to explain a little bit um, the different pieces. Now, Fantasia is structured into very different pieces. You have a piece of classical music that um, that is done, and while having these images show up on the screen. Now sometimes these images are either abstract, like you'll kind of see sort of towards the beginning of Fantasia, they try to open with more um, things that are a little bit more abstract and not really so well um, thought out images. And then they start to present us with images that uh, sort of reflect a, a a concept or an idea um, and uh, maybe a time or a place. For example, the Rite of Spring focuses on how the universe is created and although somebody on the That Guy With The Glasses website said for some reason that the Rite of Spring was just somehow the weakest, um, I fairly disagree. I think the Rite of Spring is probably one of the my favorites, really. I, I like how it's so haunting and eerie, and and how we really don't know that much about the universe, um, and how we came into being and into existence, and how life came in, into existence is sort of in this this kind of a, a mystical uh, zone by showing us these, these kinds of eerie types of music and showing us like um, maybe shooting stars, uh, you know, the, the hot 
um, hot, uh, I, I guess you could say balls of gas. Um, those kinds of the things, those kinds of things, I think, are very interesting as to showing us how um, how alone we are compared to the universe and how somehow we were able to to exist and I find that fairly fascinating um, and the rite of spring goes from sort of uh, inanimate things like stars and gas to biological and then we see how the dinosaurs come and and it's 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 very uh, it's a very emotional piece and I think it's it's very well constructed and I I think that it it highlights a little bit of how we don't know what's going to happen to us um, if we're going to somehow uh, die or, or or live on as maybe a human race as we see how the dinosaurs died out um, and I always thought like thought that way when I was a kid I was always scared um, seeing these dinosaurs um, suddenly start to slowly die and deteriorate um, and it, it, it is quite fascinating to watch I think and and how it highlights also with like when when the the music goes like bomb there's a there's like an explosion of volcanic gas or something on on uh, on the earth's surface and I think it's it's very well done um, I'm sure that there's probably biological um, inconsistencies and there's it's probably not so accurate as we would maybe show it today the sort of evolution of life um, but uh, I think it, it really does highlight um, the sort of progression of the universe in particular with planet Earth. Um, and I think it is fairly well done and it, and it does leave you with this kind of a, a haunting feeling and that's what I really enjoyed about it and I thought that the music really displays that sort of eerie kind of feeling and the the feeling of how our universe is 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 it can provide us with a lot of interesting things um, but it can also be very destructive in its in in certain ways even our and this could be our planet or this could be exterior things that come outside of our planet so it's 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 very interesting to watch. It's it's I think one of the most interesting of the pieces. There's also more happy pieces like um, uh, like when they display the sort of Greek mythology in one of the um, in one of the segments, and that's what you have to understand about Fantasias is that it goes in segments, and some segments may stand out to you more than others. There's also ones that address seasons that go from winter, fall, um, and it's it's very fascinating to watch. And they have also things like fairies um, who sort of alter these kinds of seasons, um, and it's it's very interesting. It's it's th that was another one that I found to be fairly appealing for me. Um, and the night on Bald Mountain is really well done as well, where we see this kind of Chernobog figure, this this dark figure that I mentioned was one of the scariest moments for me um, in Disney. And I think that whole piece is just very um, visual in its sense of how it's trying to show you this this sort of dark force. And it's it's nice to see how that that it's that is transitioned by uh, this sort of uh, uh, this huge light and how Ava Maria plays towards the end. Um, now often people may complain that Fantasia maybe moves a little bit slow in, in that some pieces may be a little bit more interesting and engaging than others. And I think that's fairly understandable claim to make. Um, 
Fantasia doesn't necessarily move at the pace uh, that maybe some of us may be used to. But for me, um, looking back on it, I, I remember as a, as a child being more uninterested in certain pieces and then suddenly getting maybe more invested in others. Um, but I, I guess for, for me now, I, I look back on it and I, I really do appreciate um, Fantasia and I do appreciate sort of the art that went into making it. Um, even though we wouldn't see such a such a kind of piece until later on when they made Fantasia 2000. Um, and the sequel I think is fairly well done too. Um, it, I think it has more pe some pieces that I find more engaging than others. And I think it's just a pick and choose kind of a thing. I think some people may find certain aspects of Fantasia more appealing than others. Um, but it seems like for, for my part, um, I, I thought the things that I've mentioned were probably the most engaging for me. Um, also, the... I'm trying to remember what the other one was. I think it's the... Um, it's escaping me, but I think I'll, I'll remember it at one point. But really what you have to understand with Fantasia is, is that it's it's not trying to um, I it's 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 a very artsy film and it's not trying to um, I think necessarily challenge your intellect as it is to trying to challenge your emotions um, and it's it's kind of nice to see sort of emotional simplicity through images and how it it plays with the music um, and and I think for the most part Fantasia fairly structures itself very well for having to make sure that all of the music somehow is is it goes perfectly um, with the images I, I think that's a fairly hard and difficult thing to do uh, considering for the amount of technology they had during the time which wasn't much, and they really only had what they could draw, uh, and no computers and such. So, um, all of you animators out there, just just be happy. I guess you have 3D because I heard it's it makes things easier. I don't know how about how much, but I heard that it makes things a lot easier, and you can kind of tell because with computers you can do sort of a lot of things with it. Um, but once you mess up with with drawing it, it it's like you have to start all over again so I, I think that's just how um, how much I think Fantasia represents itself in the form of a classic because people don't really look at it in the same way as they look at other Disney films and I think this one should be um, should be recognized uh, but usually what people note this film for and usually what's really on the cover of Fantasia is the Sorcerer's Apprentice which I think is a, a good um, a good short um, with Mickey Mouse and and that that's nice to see H however I think that for me it's maybe not the strongest piece but it's still very well done uh, I, I, I like how uh, it's it's sort of um, eerie at times and and it's, it's scary to kind of see the brooms you know coming back to life and um, the and uh, and I think it, it goes well with having Mickey um, be sort of the sort of center of attention in the piece but I, I really can say that for the most part, Fantasia has a tons of variety, and these varieties are maybe going to stick out more for more people than others. And then maybe you'll have a different opinion when you're older. You know, you may look at um, uh, what Fantasia's done, and you may find yourself liking uh, others uh, that you maybe didn't like as a child. 
for example, I could say that the night on Bald Mountain kind of freaked me out, so I would kind of skip through it. But now I can sit through it fine, and uh, it, it's interesting to see how that how that it's to me now it looks just very cool and and I like all the dark visuals and, and things like that. Um, it's it has its I think resonance. Um, and I think Fantasia in general just provides us with something unique and something different for the time period. And I think it still stands to the test of time to this day. Um, does it maybe move slower at times and may you not may you find yourself not as invested in some of the pieces? Yeah, I think that's barely understandable. Um, but for me, I, I really found myself enjoying a lot of them um, and finding myself being uh, fascinated and uh, thoroughly enjoying myself watching it. Uh, and I think I'll continue to enjoy Fantasia. It's it's a very interesting, unique Disney film, and and it's and it's kind of sad that they weren't able to to make more of these. Um, it's just the budget wasn't in for them. But it's nice to see that Fantasia is now recognized, and people seem to know about it more. And I think it's, in a sense, maybe underrated compared to the other Disney films. But the reason why I put it in the classic category is just because it's doing something new. Um, and it was a really big hit when it came out. Uh, it's just, it hasn't really been so, so recognized, maybe, compared to some of the other Disney films that maybe follow more of the three-act structure formula. And this doesn't follow that at all. So, again, it's it's that kind of idea. And you have to understand that that each segment of Fantasia is just trying to say something. Um, it's trying to give you something. And sometimes that something may be more resonated onto you in one piece than it is on another. So, basically how Fantasia is structured, it's just structured in segments. Like, you have the segment of the night on Ball Mountain, you have the segment of Alma Maria, you have the, this this other segment, the Rite of Spring, you have, you know, it's just all these different segments. Um, and how the conductors really try to uh, sort of uh, show you what they were trying to do with each segment. Because it does, the 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 conductor tries to explain um, a little bit, or not really the conductor, but the person who just talks <laughs> through when you're going between each segments. Uh, he basically sort of highlights to you sort of what they were trying to do with it. Um, not so thoroughly detail, and not so thoroughly in detail, but to the point where you can kind of get, oh, okay this is just what they wanted to do and this is what they were trying to go for. But you may get other things out of it than other people do um, as you go through each piece. But I think that's really all I can say about Fantasia. It's just really a nicely done um, piece of art. I mean, I think Fantasia is, is a great representation of art and movement with music. Um, it's like combining all of these things together. It's combining the drawing with sort of movie um, animation and movement, mm -hmm. and it's also showing you music. So it's it, it really combines itself, I think, really well with these sort of elements. Hi, me. All right. And that was my mom, and I believe I can eat now, and uh, I think that's really all I can say, but any questions, comments, concerns, I'm more than happy to answer them, and until next time.